All right, welcome everyone. So we are back for, it's Thursday and it's one o'clock, so you know why we're here. <laughs> we're back for another episode of The Eventful Life. Um, excited to be with you guys again, as always, and definitely um, looking forward to our discussion and our dialogue today, um, as well as my, as my guest today. Like, she is phenomenal. I just got through telling her how much I just admire and adore her before, before we went live um, for so many reasons, one of which we're going to talk about today. But um, today we're talking about vulnerability, guys. And um, I will tell you, it is a hot button for me. It is something that I have talked about in the past. For those of you who have followed me for a while, I've talked about kind of my struggle and battle and just uncomfortability with um, being vulnerable. But this year is also teaching us a lot, as we know. And one of those things I truly believe it is teaching each and every one of us on some sort of level is how to be vulnerable and how to even take it a step further, how to be okay with being vulnerable, right? And so today I'm chatting it up with Natalie Frank of the Rising Tide Society. And Natalie, I have already told you that I'm so glad that you are here today, but I literally have been looking forward to this conversation because vulnerability, I mean, you, you know, it is it is something that, and I, I think I alluded to this earlier, it's something that a lot of us are just not good at. Like we run away from it. And I want to I wanna read this quote to you because this is what really sat with me this week when I, I kind of reached out to you about the topic, you know, what we we're going to chat about when I asked you to come on. So I've been listening to Brene Brown. Are you familiar with Brene? Oh my gosh, I'm right? familiar like with Brene. You know Mickey Mouse, right? <laughs> I, lo I love Brene, without a doubt. So um, the quote from her, from her podcast, Unlocking Us, it says, vulnerability is not about fear and grief and disappointment. It is the birthplace of joy, of creativity, of belonging, and of love. Mm. And that sat with me so much because I know I, for one, have never looked at vulnerability that way. So I want to I wanna hear from you, you know, Let's just start with like, what, why do you feel like it's important to be vulnerable, but also why are we so scared of it? Mm. So I agree with Brene's assessment on sort of the opportunity that vulnerability, vulnerability gives us for all of those beautiful things that she talked about from joy to belonging to creativity. And, um, you know, I, I also would build upon that and, and say that, I think it's critically important for us as human beings to have these, these opportunities for genuine connection that aren't rooted in protecting ourselves, but are instead rooted in understanding others. And I think that that understanding really is critical, um, especially now for us to kind of step from beyond our own experience and our own shoes to really understand sort of the, the shoes that someone else has walked in and where mm -hmm. they're coming from and their experiences, whether it is joy or pain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what makes it very, very difficult for us to be vulnerable, I think, truthfully, is that it opens us up to attack. Uh, vulnerability literally means to kind of open oneself up, oneself up to attack, um, to potentially be wounded, to be harmed. Um, for the most part, we talk about vulnerability in a in a sort of a mental or um, you know social sense, not so much a physical vulnerability um, as the definition might imply, but. I think it stems from, from that simple fact that when we are vulnerable, we open ourselves up to the most tender and intimate parts of our soul, of our spirit in this case, and that welcomes sort of that potential for harm or to feel harm or to be harmed. Right. Um, and that that is a difficult place to be. That is a very, very difficult place to be. Yeah. Um, and so it is a challenge. I also think something you and I talked about prior to even hopping on was just how many of us from the time we're very young are almost discouraged from vulnerability. Um, right. Not, I think, in an intention to do any harm to us, but instead because many of us have not had the luxury. Uh, and it really is to be yeah. in a space where you can take the walls down and know you're amongst others that are safe for yeah. you to be vulnerable, for you to take sort of the, you know, I think of it almost like the shield that yeah. you put in front of yourself, you know, yeah. to, to protect what, what's so tender. 
Many of us have not had that opportunity to be in those types of communities or spaces or um, life situations where we can be vulnerable without the wound. Yes. And so if you're listening to this and you're saying, I have like, this is a foreign concept or this really terrifies me. um, I want you to know that that is okay. And that that is very much a shared experience among, among others. I mean, everyone has their different experience with that, but yes, that is okay. It is okay to feel as though vulnerability is one of the most terrifying things um, that you can embark on. It's And it doesn't feel good. Like, I think that's the, well, let me say this. It doesn't feel good when you're in the midst of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like when you are being vulnerable, there, I feel like there's this like tug of war. Like you're like, okay, I know this is like what I need to do. And, ha- and, and, and this is the authentic part of it, right? It's like, this is what I need. But then there's this other part. I feel like it's almost like an out-of-body experience. It's like <laughs> you're looking at yourself and you're like, no, no girl, don't do it. But then, <laughs> but then you're like, no, do it, do it, do it. And so like, I, you know, and I shared with you about my upbringing and just, how that just wasn't something that I was raised to do. Like, it was like, no, no, you don't need that. Like, be strong, be powerful, go forth, conquer the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was just all those things. And, and so then this concept of vulnerability seemed always very foreign and, and negative, you know, and, and foreign, like you said. And so I really had to, like, retrain myself along the way or even check myself along the way like no that's okay because if 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 that is the the authentic feeling then it, it's okay to share that right mm. but but let's talk about how when you do open yourself up for you know as you mentioned the the attack right or or it, when you're opening yourself up to that because there is that possibility mm-hmm. then how do you talk yourself through the fact that you are opening, you like you literally are opening yourself up. And I think as creatives, right? Like there's a number of ways in which we are opening ourselves up every single time we put our work, our thoughts, our, you know, artistic ability, creative ability, every time we put it out there into the world, we're saying, hey, here's the deepest parts of me for you to be able to now attack and judge. (laughs) Like, what do we do with that? (laughs) Yes. And look, I had a friend say to me, she's like, I spent years writing a book. And in a matter of 10 seconds, someone tore me down um, with a, you know, with a review. And and she now, she was talking to me just yesterday about this. She's like, how do I navigate that? How do I navigate putting my whole heart and soul into something that to me is such a vulnerable act to give the world um, and, and to navigate that pain on the other side of that when um, you receive that criticism or that feedback, which again is part of this process. Look, I, I definitely am not an expert in vulnerability from the standpoint that you may think, but what I can contribute to this um, from, from an advice perspective is that it gets easier. The truth is that the act of vulnerability, doing it and and taking that step and being willing little by little by little to tear down the walls that we've built around ourselves and our hearts every single day, it becomes a process that you become better at accepting that that feedback or that fear or that um, concern that you have around being vulnerable. It becomes a little bit more bearable. Um, It doesn't mean that it it won't still be difficult to navigate, but I think it does mean that the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And we could talk a little bit in a minute about my story and my experience with that. But, you know, I, I will be the first one to say that I really struggled with true vulnerability for a long time. And I think for all of us, it's important to remember that there's a difference between what looks and appears as vulnerable Mm -hmm. and what for someone truly is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I, and I say that because we live in a world where we'll say, Oh, she is so vulnerable. This person is so vulnerable. And in many instances that person may be, but I also see acts of vulnerability every single day from people who are having the courage to show up in a difficult season. And sometimes just the act of showing up and contributing to a conversation that on the outside looking in, another person might say, that's not vulnerable to that person was terrifying. Like they took a right. step, they took a step in the right direction. They, you know, um, voiced how they felt or they say, spoke it's up. Funny that you're saying that because, you know, last week we talked about 
finding your voice. Like that's what we talked about on this, on this episode, uh, on the eventful life, we talked about finding your voice. So I, I love what you're saying because I think that it's almost like that's like chapter two, right? It's like, you know, f- okay, first figure out, find it, right? Find it and figure out what that is, what like makes you want to use your voice, like put out here that, hey, I feel a certain way about this. But then chapter two is like you said, like realize that with that comes this vulnerability of saying, okay, hey, I'm going to say what I need to say, or I'm going to contribute to this conversation, but not everybody may <laughs> may like it. Not everybody may agree with it, right? Um, but this is what I'm choosing to do because I feel like that, you know, this could impact somebody or it, it's yes. impacting me, you know? 100%. Um, so I, I love that. I love that analogy. And, and I want to, I think it's so important right now in this period of time with the pandemic, with the racial tension, um, because that's where I feel like a lot of people are being pushed to be vulnerable. And you use, you use such a powerful word, which is showing up. Like, mm-hmm. let's face it, some days we get up and we don't. Right now in this climate, we have not wanted to show up. I'll be the first to say, you know, there's some days where I'm like, <laughs> no, thank you, <laughs> you know, but we, we made a decision, we made a choice. And I feel like you've been making, I know you said you're not the expert, but through your own story, you've been making that decision and making that choice. And, and, and so I want the audience to hear a little bit more about your own story of how you've been working through that. Yeah. And I appreciate, I appreciate all of that and the kind words that you have and encouraging, but maybe sharing that story will hope to illuminate why I still feel like I'm a humble student of vulnerability. Um, I, you know, was diagnosed with a benign brain tumor when I was 21 and, you know, the, the Natalie of that season, this is the beauty of, of, as we grow and change and evolve, we have this ability to, to grow into the person we're becoming and leave parts of ourselves behind. Yes. Oh, that's so good, Natalie. This was a moment for me in my life. Um, That diagnosis really rattled, I think, my perception of self, my perception of normal. Mm. Um, And, you know, I was not the vulnerable person that I'm working to become every day back in that season. You know, I really, I think, valued my worth on the perfect mask that I wore and the way I presented myself to the world, that nothing was ever wrong. I had it, I could do it, you know, I was able and capable. And this diagnosis started to kind of peel away, I think, of that version of me. And I I didn't share for several years um, about what I was struggling with behind the scenes, both kind of coming to to grips with with what having a benign brain tumor meant, both, you know, for my fertility. Yeah. Also for, um, you know, the, the need to potentially have surgery, those types of things. I really struggled to kind of accept that diagnosis, right. truthfully. Um, I mean, that's until, a lot to swallow. I mean, it, it, you it know, is. that's not But easy. all of us have that thing. I mean, all of us do. We all have that thing, um, that experience at some point in our lives where yeah. we discover something that we struggle to accept. It could You're be right. relationally a diagnosis. It could be, it, I mean, many of us are going through it this year. This year has been a big year for us to kind of, we talked about this sort of before yeah. too, but struggling to accept the reality of what mm-hmm. is um, okay. and not the illusion of mm-hmm. what we want it to be. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that was that experience. And I didn't tell anyone, I kept that diagnosis a secret for years and years and years from the world with the exception of my immediate family or my photography team. I was a full-time wedding photographer at the time that needed to know um, because I needed to build a business. I felt like with integrity where if I got, if I woke up blind yeah, one something morning, happened to you. Yeah. that they knew, they knew how to handle it. And I had a backup for my client. So the, the pool of who knew was very limited. And that was out of my fear, out of my fear of judgment, my fear of criticism, my fear of being pitied or yeah. not seen as strong um, because I, I was navigating a, a difficult um, situation. Mm. And everything for me came to a head when we, my husband and I moved to California mm-hmm. um, for work to work at HoneyBook. And um, I got a brand new medical team. I got a whole new medical team. And in that first round of appointments with my neuro team was told by my neurosurgeon and my neuroendocrinologist that they really were advocating for surgery, that they felt like 
um, both for my long-term quality of life, but also if I ever wanted to try to get pregnant, um, that this tumor needed to be removed. And how did you feel in that moment? Like, you know, with them telling you, like, we need to do surgery on your brain. Like, yeah, Truly, that, that's, that's a lot. Um, you know, I think it forced me to finally accept the diagnosis I had been given years before mm. that because I didn't have a direct course of action to take because I didn't need to take medication every day for it. Mm. I was able to compartmentalize that part of who I was. Right. And like, okay, I know this is happening, away. but I'm going to keep it over here. Mm. And it really, really forced me to stop doing that and to acknowledge that I have a benign brain tumor and it impacts my hormones. It impacts whether or not I'll be able to have biological children. It impacts um, the migraines that I have almost monthly. Like there, there are consequences of this and I can't really deny that anymore. I have to, mm-hmm. speaking of being vulnerable, I have to almost be vulnerable with myself and with accept yourself. myself for who I really am um, and not for the person I want to pretend I am and mm-hmm. I want the world to think I am. And look, like one thing you said early on really struck with me where you said I was, you know, I always felt like I had to be this, this strong and mm-hmm. This was that moment for me being told I needed surgery, acknowledging that I had a choice to make. I could either continue to lie, which at that moment I realized I was lying, continue to lie and not tell the world kind of, hey, I need to take time away from work to recover from brain surgery. Or I had an opportunity to step forward in honesty and in transparency. And for me, it was that moment where I realized I, I didn't want to come out on the other side of this surgery, not myself, or for something to happen. And for the last thing that I communicated to my community to be a lie, Mm. to not be the truth, I didn't want that. That really for me was sort of a a pivotal moment where I realized I had to be vulnerable. And and in that moment of coming forward and sharing, look, I have a benign brain tumor. I'm going in for brain surgery. I'm going to need to take a lot of time off for recovery. This is my experience. And I want to, I'm going to be honest about it. I found a new form of strength. Mm. Like that, yeah. that moment for me really made it clear that, um, what I thought was strength, pretending I was okay, yeah. keeping like my chin up and not it. letting people in. Oh, it redefined yeah. it for me. And it made me realize, you know what, there's also another form of strength too, um, that's important and that's valid. And, you know, being able to say, this is my truth and my experience and what I'm going through, mm-hmm. although difficult. And it did bring, I mean, Again, it, it brought a lot of different feedbacks of sorts. Um, I was gonna say, I mean, like you said, you 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 literally are handing it over and saying, mm-hmm. it is what it is, right? Yep. And so whatever comes, then you're saying, I, I'm I am freeing myself of whatever comes. Then I'm, I'm taking the good, the bad, the icky, all of it, right? Which but- is powerful. And it, it felt in that moment, just like Brene kind of quotes, where it felt in that moment like it was a freedom that I hadn't experienced right. um, in the pursuit of trying to hide. It was sort of this unclenching and this release and this, hey, this is me. Like, yeah. you know, there was this foundation then from which, like she says, the joy can blossom and the belonging, like the true belonging people yeah. saying- Your community really rallied around. I mean, they, they rallied, yes. you know? And without a doubt. And, and it- enabled me, I think, from that day forward to then, as I mentioned, take those baby steps yeah. to kind of just question before I share something like, is this like really authentic to how my experience is? Yeah. yeah. The real, real. And like, is this really what I'm, what I'm walking through or how I want to present? And, you know, even today, like that surgery was three years ago and, um, we, went on to um, have fertility treatment to have my son. And I shared about that journey a, a little bit. Baby boy. <laughs> oh, I mean, a miracle. I mean, yeah. I'm learning now truly like what a miracle he was. And, yeah. you know, to, I shared a little bit of, of that season. And now my husband and I are going through it again. We're going through fertility treatment again. Mm-hmm. And this time around, it's been very different. Like this mm-hmm. time around, um, things are not going as well as they did. Not that they mm-hmm. went great the first time, but they're not even going as well as they did the first time. And yeah. as I say, like the more you're the more you begin to share and the more you begin to open up, the more of the impact you see on the other side. You know, when I shared about my benign brain tumor, the, the number of people that came to me and said, I actually have a similar diagnosis. I have a, you know, I have a pituitary tumor like you, or I have this type of adrenal disease. I actually experienced similar symptoms. It created 
that, that true and earnest belonging that we desire, like that ability to say like, I see you and I am here for you. And not just in the comments on the public post, like I'm here. I'm really, really here. here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's transformative. That's the authenticity, right? That is the, and, and I love that you said like, it, it, it reached, it redefined like what you thought of strength, you know, um, and being strong because that is authenticity. Like, it's like through your, what you deem your weakest, you know, your, your weakest moments, it is like this, this unfound true strength is what is, what is really shown, you know, and, and then comes the belonging and, you know, the desire to belong, but then people really gravitate because they're like, I get that. Like, I I can look at you and say, I understand that, you know, versus when, you know, and and not that strength is a bad thing, because I don't want to paint the picture that something's wrong with being strong. Um, But if, if, if it is, strong in perfection, then Mm. that can't be that like that. Who who can, who can that resonate with? You know, who can that resonate with? Because we all are flawed and we all have had moments where we're like, I suck, you know, like that's just real. Sometimes on a daily basis, (laughs) at least over here, truly, like truly on a daily basis. Um, Exactly. Exactly. So I love that. I love that. And, um, and I remember, you know, following your journey and seeing, you know, and seeing um, how you shared and, and I thought it was very moving. Uh, My heart went out to you. I I thought that you, you know, through that, I, I, again, I loved you even more because I was like, you know, that I knew that took a lot for you to, to do that, you know, to, to even share in that way. Um, So, you know, I think I, 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 I know you say you're, you're still on the journey and I, and I get it because it's not like a one-time thing. It's not like, Oh, I shared now I, I am vulnerable. I am the most vulnerable. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, it creeps back in. And then there's, there comes another moment where you have to then, you know, find that vulnerability of, like you said, do the check and balance. Like, am I, am I really sharing the way that it is, you know, or am I sharing the way that I want it to appear that it is? So I, I can appreciate that and that you, you know, know that it is a continued journey that we are all on. Yeah. You know, with that journey though, let, let, let's, let's kind of flip to the other side of it. Right. Because, and, and I feel like maybe you alluded to it a little bit earlier on in the, in the conversation, but Sometimes we, you know, you, you'll hear the, the comments or the thought like, wow, they, they, they shared too much, you know, or did we have to know all that? You know, like, you're like you, <laughs> you'll hear that. And it's like, so is there, I guess my question is, is there such a thing as being too vulnerable? Like, is that synonymous with like just sharing too much? So I think that this is a challenging question for a lot of reasons. For me, it always goes back to you yourself, the one sharing, um, the person who is is making the choice to be vulnerable in whatever situation they deem safe and and they feel comfortable in in being vulnerable. You know, vulnerability hangovers are a real thing. They are a very real thing. And and I want to first say that like there's a difference too between the vulnerability hangover, which I almost feel like is kind of part and parcel of doing it. You know, you do it, you're going to feel afterwards, like, should I go and delete that thing I said, or should I, can I take that back? Because I can't tell you. I'm the only one who does that. You know, I'll put my, put my feelings out there or put my heart out there on display. And then I'm like, where's the delete button? (laughs) Yes. All the time. All the time. I, right. Like go back and, okay, let me take that word out or let me, let me update it. Remember 100%. when Facebook used to show like where how many times you edited things? I was like, could you stop doing that? Like mine is gonna show like 50 times. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I mean truly though, like truly, I remember I do remember that. And I, I know, and to this day, it's one of the reasons I think I take so long sometimes to post because yes. I think, okay, I have to double check and triple check. And even then I again we talked about still making the mistakes and like I still all the time will still go, I probably should have changed this or I didn't right. to include this or 
every time, every time. So I want to first say the vulnerability hangover is very real. Yeah. Uh, you should have no, and no shame in feeling that after being vulnerable. That is, that is just part of that process. I think of, of putting yourself out there. It is uncomfortable because yeah. you're being vulnerable. It should be uncomfortable. Should if it's be, completely right. comfortable, we have to add like, is it really vulnerable? You know? Exactly. Um, so that's the first thing. But yes, you know, do I think that there's something as being too, too vulnerable? I think the moments in which I have experienced that, but also witnessed people I love experience that is when they're sharing from a place of such pain that they themselves have not been able to fully process mm. and not been able to really um, accept and navigate the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so in those moments, that is when, and it's not so much, I, I really don't worry if it's, if other people perceive it to be too vulnerable, that's on them. Like yeah. that's not truly, truly like that's on them. I think it's more about the individual and the wellness of the individual in kind of opening up maybe before they're ready yeah. or opening yeah. up perhaps in a space that's that good. isn't safe before yeah. they're ready. Um, and that's where that trauma can come in that yeah. potentially traumatic type of experience where they open up, they reveal their heart, their, their themselves, mm -hmm. and they're met with something that is damaging and does mm -hmm. damage because it's maybe, like I said, too soon or not in a safe space. And so th those are sort of the, the moments where I, myself and others kind of, I've seen experience that like, oh, that might've been too vulnerable, but not because they shouldn't share it, but because mm -hmm. maybe other factors um, played into either the timing or the, the, the space itself that yeah. weren't really um I like the the too soon part because I I do agree with you on that and I've seen examples of where people are still you know still in the thick of it like they haven't yeah. processed it they haven't healed from it and so the sharing is um it's not it's not helpful. It's not purposeful, I, I guess I'll say, you know, in a way, because it, it's hard for people to um, comb through the pain, you know, comb, comb through, because um, sometimes it can be visceral, right? Like, I mean, a doubt. if, a if you doubt. haven't healed from it or haven't come through it yet, then it can come off as visceral. And I think that that's where it's not as, helpful or purposeful um, if, if you haven't done that yet. So I do agree with you on that. Um, and so I think it's, it's important for that person to, to really understand, like, have I, have I sat with it myself first mm -hmm. and dealt with it myself before I'm sharing? Because I think part of the, and you, you let me know if you agree, but part of the purpose of, of sharing from a vulnerable state is that you, there is a part of you that feels like, okay, maybe somebody else will, I mean, it's that belonging, going back to that belonging, like maybe somebody out there has dealt with this or is going through this and this will resonate or help, you know, help them. But if I'm still in pain from it, then I don't know how much help, <laughs> you know, that, that can, that can be. So, um, so I, I appreciate you saying that. And, um, one, one thing I'd love to add, um, just before we close this question here is I also think when we talk about vulnerability, we have to talk about that space that we are vulnerable in, yeah. um, and the importance of that. And so for example, um, the, the way in which you might engage in vulnerability with your partner yeah. or your best friend or your confidant yeah. can be different from the level of vulnerability from which how you connect with, let's say your public audience right. or you know, exactly. your, your customers, if you're a business right. owner, your community, um, if you lead community, those levels of vulnerability, I've always envisioned it in my head, like concentric circles. Like we mm. have the tight knit concentric circle, um, and then it kind of works its way out. And, and one exercise that I've done in my own life, even in, you know, recently thinking, okay, you know, when am I ready to share that Hugh and I are doing fertility treatment again? Because we're in the midst of it. We don't have a happy ending yet. We're not yeah. like, I, you know, I think sometimes we wait until we're at the happy ending point, which is, which is fine. And I did that with my son because I, what I personally wasn't in a place where I could share right. exactly from exactly. the right place, yeah. right? Like I knew, I knew myself, processing. I was navigating yeah. that experience. Um, exactly. Whereas now I'm in a different headspace in, in this season and um, I'm able to share in this messy middle where mm -hmm. I wasn't before. And there's no shame in either. I like, I, I really mm -hmm. am about like, get rid of shame. There's no shame in either choice, but we got to think about those spaces where we're vulnerable. So it's something where it's like, first have that conversation with someone in that inner circle. 
And then you go outside of that inner circle and you keep working your way out Mm -hmm. um, rather than just going right to your public page and um, being vulnerable for the first time. Because I do think when we say about too vulnerable, um, having that opportunity to engage in vulnerability in those safest spaces, Mm -hmm. a little less safe, a little less safe, Mm -hmm. a little less safe. Um, it not only helps to protect our hearts and, yeah. and to ensure that, you know, we're taken care of by people that care and can pour mm-hmm. back into us, but. Right. Who truly will, will let you know, like, yes. okay, Natalie, that, that's a little off. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or even just, you know, again, yes. Help us to refine um, the way it's received, the right. way it's received on the other end, because that's something I myself have to work through where we all know, you know, how, how we feel about it, something in here. But then once it comes out of our mouths, it's, we're now engaging another individual. There's a new variable to exactly. the equation. And exactly. so having, having those, those circles where we can continue that conversation and know that we're going to get the feedback we need and in, in learning how to share it, um, you it's know, I, yeah. I think it is important. So I wanted to add that as well, because I think Go sometimes ahead. when we say, you know, is there such a thing as too soon? There's so many variables to that question. Yeah. Is it yeah. you're too vulnerable? Is it too soon? Is it with the right, um, people as it can be communicated, um, you know, in, in, in a certain way or not. And so a lot of variables. And that's that's a great segue into my next, you know, kind of my next question, which is how can vulnerability lead to success? And that's success Mm -hmm. in relationships, that's success in careers, that's success in different situations. Um, that's success in our current climate, you know, It's like, how can something that can sometimes be, you know, very uh, uncomfortable, how can that lead to success? And I think part of what you just said actually plays a huge part in it because the delivery does have a lot to do with how it lands, right? I I mean, it absolutely does. And I I think about that from a personal level. Um, Me and my husband practice this all the time about just how we um, make sure that we are ready to receive what is being shared, right? (laughs) And so I think it it is um, very much similar, as you mentioned, in our our circles, our inner circles and, and with our community to make sure that um, and I love the way you frame that as far as kind of like, it's almost like flexing muscle, like, okay, you know, when you're working out, like, okay, let's start here, start with this, this five pounder, see how you do with that. <laughs> and, then, and then we can move to the 10 pounder. If you do well with that, then you might be ready for the 15 pounder, but you get stronger and your movement gets better mm-hmm. each time you do it. Mm-hmm. And you love with it. And so I, I I mean, I'd love to hear any other thoughts you have around that, but I I think that is part of it being a part of the success. First of all, that was a mic drop moment. That is a powerful analogy. So I hope everyone just like took that note from you. That is a powerful analogy because when you are building that muscle and working your way up, we remember, um, I'm sure all of us from, I don't know what, what class I learned this in biology or yeah. phys ed, but when one, you, one of those, one of those, <laughs> but when you, when you build muscle, what are you actually doing? You're actually, you have to tear apart, mm. um, you know, the, the muscle first in order for it to build up back stronger. Mm. And so I think that's also part of this process. When I talk about it gets easier with time. It's like when you first lift that five pound dumbbell, you know, if you've never done it before and that's, that is your limit, your weight limit, you're going to tear down that muscle. It's going to be a tough experience. It's going to be heavy and hard. The more that you do it, then you're moving up to the 10 pounds. You become more comfortable with that level of vulnerability. Then you're moving up to the 15, then you're moving up to the 20. And so Mm -hmm. I think that that is a really beautiful analogy. I want to highlight that. I think it's so powerful. Um, In terms of success, the best way I can describe it is that vulnerability breeds empathy. Mm. And I truly believe um, beyond any uh, shadow of a doubt that the truly empathy is sort of this key component that enables us to grow closer together and mm. also move forward together. Um, yeah. Empathy is such a powerhouse um, experience for us as, as humans. And when someone is able to be vulnerable and say, this is who I am. It does change the way we perceive them. Mm. It gives us a fuller picture of maybe their experience or what they're walking through. Mm. It can be a vehicle for giving grace, better understanding. I mean, Mm -hmm. it truly, it is powerful empathy. Truly, truly, truly is. Mm. And so, um, I mean, I've seen that in my own life when I've caught myself 
you know, feeling a certain way about how someone acted, even as simple as in a meeting, the way Mm -hmm. someone came off in a meeting or comment that they made to me. And then later on realizing, oh, like they were walking through that. That had nothing to do with me. Like they were enduring X, Y, Z in that moment. It changes my perception of the experience. It changes my perception of them. Um, I think it really enables it and it has in my life me to see people fuller, not for the 50% or the 25% that we think we know on the outside, but to see the human underneath, to see the person that is trying to carry the weight of the world on their shoulders. And just like you said, you know, is trying to keep it together and is trying to be strong and is doing everything they can just to make it through the day. Right. And instead of us on the outside judging for that 25% that we see, it gives us a chance to connect their pain to ours or their experience to ours, or even if we can't connect, just to reveal the humanity underneath. And I, I know for a fact in my life that has transformed my relationships. It has transformed the way I respond to people, how I react to people. Um, And I think that that empathy, one of the vehicles to empathy is through vulnerability. Um, And so it does lead to success, leads to how to carry ourselves in the world, how we treat other people, how we treat ourselves. Ourselves, Um, right, right. And, you know, empathy is, I believe, uh, one of the things that's involved or should be involved in every, you know, kind of every movement decision that you make. You know, um, I think sometimes we can be too quick to, like you said, kind of judge or, or attack or, or why did they say it that way? Or why did that, you know, um, empathy though, when you, when you lead with that will make you look at that same interaction very differently. And that's one of the things I've, I've had to grow through is, you know, empathy makes you look at, okay, what else might be what might they be dealing with, you know, or what else? And that it's not about you, right? It's not about, it's, it's not about you. It's, it's about that person and, and whatever their struggle or journey or, or, or whatever it is that they, you know, that they're trying to work through. Um, and then the grace, I love that you said the grace because the grace is what helps us to, to come back and get it right again. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, or allows mm-hmm. the opportunity for us to come allows back. The opportunity. Right? Yes. yes. <laughs> because we want our bad days. We want somebody to do the same with us, gotta but do. we've got to be willing to do that with, you know, with others. So I love that. So much wisdom, Natalie, so much wisdom. <laughs> and this was so good. Um, I just want to thank you and um, for this conversation. I, I hope that, you know, audience out there that is listening, I hope that you guys took away a lot of nuggets from this because this was one of those quiet strong ones right it was it was it wasn't like bold and in your face like sometimes we show up here and do i mean if you want more coffee i can go get more coffee i mean i need at least two more cups and i can come back bold and fierce but i'm telling you thursday at 1 p.m it's like i know i feel like a lot of people can relate to this i'm just like clinging i'm clinging thursday like friday is tomorrow and i know friday is right there it's like in your peripheral you know (laughs) oh man but no i thank you so much for inviting me to your stage and um facilitating this space to talk about vulnerability it's so powerful and i really hope i hope one i would say one word hit one person the way that it was meant to today and And, and and speaking of one word what is your i want your final your final final thoughts, Mm. advice, tip on someone who is struggling with being vulnerable? Like what's the one thing, if you had one thing you can say to them, what would that one thing be? Oh, the one thing I think I would say is take your first step. Um, you know, we talked about flexing the muscles and growing those muscles. I would say, take your first step, um, today. It's a challenge to be vulnerable in a way that maybe you haven't before. And that could look like texting a family member or a friend that maybe you haven't connected with in a while and Mm. starting a new conversation that maybe you're afraid to have, or you've held off on having, or, um, maybe that means like, you know, last week you said, we're talking about finding your voice. Maybe that means now that you found your voice, finding a way that you want to use that voice and taking the first vulnerable step to use that voice and to have the courage to do that. Again, all of this takes courage. And so my final advice is take that first step. You don't have to get it perfect. 
progress is so important, right? It doesn't have to be, you don't have to come out being like, I'm the most vulnerable human in the world after listening to this talk. (laughs) Um, You know, no, 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 that's okay. But just go ahead and take that one step and that one step is going to lead to another. And if you need anyone to cheer you on, we're both here. Um, And we'll be glad to. How do they find you? Because if you don't get connected with this dynamic woman, then you're crazy. Um, Yes. Let them know how they can find you offline, connect with you, because um, there's so many amazing things that Natalie is doing in um, the creative community, Um, you know, Rising Tide Society, Honey Book. I mean, she's a powerhouse, y'all. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't come on here and lie to you, but let them know how they can stay connected with you. Absolutely. So I do live in a lot of places um, on the internet is kind of what I always say. Um, So you mentioned a few. So one would be um, Honeybook. You can always find me there. Rising Tide Society. That is the community that I co-founded for small business owners and creative entrepreneurs. And so I do want to encourage everyone listening. If you um, do run a business or are a creative or are exploring running a business or been doing this forever and just need a, a great group of people to connect with, We have chapters in over 400 cities around the world, and we have two groups that are not geographically connected, Um, one for creatives who are chronically ill and one for creatives in the military or part of a military family. So if you live somewhere or fall into any of those two categories or just are a business owner and want to join our big group, you can do that too. So you can head to honeybook.com slash rising tide and learn more. And then, um, for me personally, I'm always here to support, connect uh, in any way that I can. The best place to find me is on Instagram, just at Natalie Frank. I spend way too much time over there. Um, <laughs> so feel free to slide into the DMs or leave a comment and get connected. I'd, I'd love to learn more about you and support you in any way that I can. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Natalie. Guys, I hope again, I hope that you take away Um, a ton from this, especially about vulnerability and just how to start walking that out. Like Natalie said, step by step, little by little in your own journey, in your own walk of life. Um, One thing I know for sure that 2020 is teaching us um, and has, is teaching me personally is that we, we have one life to live and, Mm -hmm. you know, we are blessed to wake up each and every morning Um, because some are not as fortunate. And so for that, we owe it to ourselves and to the world to be vulnerable in the fact that we are still here. Flawed, but we're still here. So I hope you guys enjoy. Enjoy the rest of the week. I'll see you here again. Same channel, same time, same day, different topic and (laughs) different fabulous woman that I'm going to bring to you the next time. Have a good one, guys. And remember, it's you can have it all, but on your terms and your time. See you.